Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss yet another important and conceptual problem from uh, definite integrals uh, in which uh, we will uh, use the method of differentiation under the integral sign, right? So the method of differentiation under the integral sign, uh, this method is also known as Leibniz integral rule, right? So in this lecture, uh, we will see uh, how we can uh, evaluate this integral uh, using this method, right? So here we have the integral uh, 0 to infinity 1 minus e raised to minus pi x square uh, divided by x square dx, right? So let us start. So viewers, uh, while applying the method of differentiation under the integral sign, uh, what we usually do, uh, we take an integral uh, which is similar to the integral which we have to calculate, right? So here I uh, will take an integral uh, 0 to infinity uh, 1 minus e raised to minus ax square uh, divided by x square dx, right? So here I uh, will assume or will introduce a parameter a uh, in the integral uh, so that we can differentiate this integral i uh, with respect to this parameter a, right? So here uh, this a is our uh, parameter or the variable and moreover a is greater than zero, right? So uh, while uh, evaluating this integral, I uh, will take or will start with this integral, right? So uh, once uh, we'll complete all the steps regarding this integral, in the final result, we can substitute a is equal to pi so that we can uh, obtain the value of this given integral, right? So now see, uh, we will start with this integral and this integral is a function of a, right? So while applying the method of differentiation under, under the integral sign, uh, we take the integral as a function of uh, the variable which was introduced, right? So here A is the variable. Now we'll uh, differentiate this uh, integral with respect to this variable A, uh, keeping X as constant, right? So it implies that we have to make use of uh, partial differentiation. So let us differentiate this integral both sides with respect to this uh, parameter a. So we have del i a over del a and here we have del of del a 0 to infinity 1 minus e raised to minus a x square uh, divided by x square and here we have dx, right? So now since uh, this is uh, uh, an operator so we can take this uh, derivative operator inside the integral sign right so uh, we can now write 0 to infinity and here we have del by del a of 1 minus e raised to minus a x square uh, divided by x square right now we have to differentiate this function uh, with respect to a keeping x as constant, right? So what we will get, we have 0 to infinity. Uh, we can take this x square outside this operator. So we have 1 over x square. And now we have del by del a of 1 minus e raised to minus a x square. And here we have dx, right? So now we can write 0 to infinity 1 over x square. Now the derivative of 1 uh, is 0 because 1 is a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0, right? And here uh, we have to differentiate e raised to minus ax square with respect to a, right? So what we will get here, uh, the derivative of e raised to minus ax square is e raised to minus ax square and then uh, by chain rule we can differentiate a minus ax square with respect to a. So the derivative of a is 1. So we have simply here 
x square right and here we can write dx so now we can uh, simplify uh, this integral so we have uh, del i a over del a is equal to uh, c we can now write 0 to infinity and here we have minus minus plus so we are left with x square e raised to minus a x square divided by x square dx right now this x square and this x square get cancelled so we are left with 0 to infinity and e raised to minus a x square dx right so now uh, we have uh, this uh, equation so now see uh, we have to evaluate this integral right and let us take this integral as i1 right so here uh, what we will do i uh, will separately solve this integral so here uh, we can evaluate this integral uh, by making use of the concept of a gamma function, right? So we'll uh, substitute here uh, t is equal to uh, say ax square, right? So we'll solve this integral by method of substitution. So t is equal to ax square. So we can now write x square is equal to t over a that is x is uh, square root of t over square root of a right now let us differentiate uh, x with respect to t so we have dx over dt is equal to 1 over square root of a and the derivative of square root of t uh, is 1 over uh, 2 times square root of t right so now uh, dx can be written as dt uh, divided by 2 times square root of a times square root of t right okay so now uh, here i uh, will also change the limits so now see here uh, the limits uh, vary from 0 to infinity right so when x is 0 then we can obtain the value of t from this relation so when x is 0 then t is also 0 right and similarly when x is infinity then t is also infinite right so now let us write this integral i1 in terms of t so we have 0 to infinity the limits uh, remains the same and here we have e raised to minus t and because ax square is t and dx is replaced by a dt divided by 2 root a and here we have square root of t right so i1 can be written as 1 over 2 times square root of a now we can take 2 times square root of a as constant and we can take it out uh, from the integral sign so we have 0 to infinity e raised to minus t and see here we have square root of t. So if we take square root of t to the numerator, we have t raised to minus half and here we have dt. So now we can write this integral i1 as 1 over 2 root a and here we have 0 to infinity e raised to minus t and here we have t raised to minus half right and t raised to minus half can be written as half minus 1 right so that we can convert this integral uh, into the gamma function. So now we know that the gamma function is defined as the gamma of n is 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 dx for n greater than 0 right so this is the famous euler integral uh, which defines the gamma function gamma of n is 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 dx right so now if we compare this integral with this one we can see that uh, this integral is in the variable t and uh, here x raised to n minus 1 here we have t raised to half minus 1 
So if we compare this integral with this one, then we can easily see that n is half, right? So this integral is nothing but uh, gamma of half, right? So gamma of half is 0 to infinity, e raised to minus t, t raised to half minus 1, right? And we know a standard result that is gamma of half is square root of pi, right? So if we write here the value of gamma of half, so we have 1 over 2 root a and here we have square root of pi, right? So now uh, the value of this integral that is i1 is given by uh, square root of pi over a and uh, here we can write half, right? So this is half times square root of pi over a. So now we can uh, replace uh, this integral by its value half times square root of pi over a. So we were, now we can write uh, this equation as del i over del a is equal to i1 because this integral was assumed as i1 and i1 is equal to uh, half times square root of pi over square root of a, right? So now we have a differential equation of first order, right? So we can now solve this differential equation for a. So we have del i uh, over del a is equal to uh, root pi over 2 and here square root of a can be taken to the numerator. So we have a raised to minus half, right? So now we can write del i a is equal to root pi over 2 a raised to minus half and here we have dA, right? And now we can uh, integrate both sides and here C is the constant of integration. So we will, so whenever we apply the method of differentiation under the integral sign, uh, we first uh, introduce a parameter A. Right? And we form a general integral and then we differentiate that general integral into uh, with respect to the uh, introduced variable and then we form a differential equation. Right? And then we solve that differential equation. So here we have this differential equation. So uh, here uh, di is simply uh, ia. So here we have ia. And here uh, we have root pi over 2 integral a raised to minus half dA plus C. So we have i of a root pi over 2 and uh, the integral of a raised to minus half dA is 2 times square root of a, right? Because here we have uh, used this result that is x raised to n dx is x raised to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 uh, provided n is not equal to minus 1, right? So here the value of n is minus half, right? So 2 and 2 get cancelled. So we are left with i of a is equal to square root of y times a, right? So combining these two terms, we have the square root of y a and here we have C, right? So now our aim is to get the value of this C which is the constant of integration, right? And uh, we'll find this C with the help of some initial conditions. So let us find the value of C, right? So what we will do, uh, let us take the conditions as uh, A is equal to uh, 0 and uh, we'll find the value of i, right? So if we take a is equal to zero in this integral, and then see what is the value of i of zero, right? So when we take a is equal to zero here, then i of zero is equal to zero to infinity, one minus e raised to zero, 
because a is 0 so 0 times x square is 0 and here we have x square dx right and e raised to 0 is 1 right so we have 0 to infinity 1 minus 1 over x square dx and 1 minus 1 is 0 so the value of the integral it vanishes so this is 0 right so e raised to 0 is 1 so we see that when we apply the condition that a is equal to 0 then i of 0 is also equal to 0. So now uh, here uh, taking a is equal to 0 uh, we have i of 0 is equal to uh, square root of pi times 0 plus c. So i of 0 is 0 so we have 0 is equal to 0 plus c. So this implies that c is equal to 0, right? So we see that the value of the uh, constant of integration is 0. So taking this c is equal to 0 in this equation, we have i of a is equal to square root of pi a plus 0. That is i of a is equal to square root of pi a. And uh, remember a is uh, greater than 0, right? So here uh, we have obtained the value of this integral, right? So the value of this integral is equal to square root of pi a, right? So the value of this integral depends on the value of a, right? So now we can easily find out the value of this integral, right? So if we replace a by pi because here we have minus pi x square. So if we take a is equal to uh, pi, then the value of this integral is uh, e raised to minus pi x square over x square dx is equal to square root of pi times pi because a is pi so this is square root of pi square that is equal to pi right so the value of this integral is pi now similarly if we wish to find out the values of these two integrals uh, then we can easily uh, use this result right so if uh, taking the first integral uh, we can compare this integral with this one so here we have minus 1x square so a is 1 right so the value of this integral is given by this expression by taking a is equal to 1 so we have root pi times 1 that is square root of pi so the value of this integral is square root of pi and in this case we have the value of a as 2 so the value of this integral is root pi times 2 because a is 2 so this is square root of 2 pi right